Now, I know I said I was watching horror classics, uh, so you might be asking why The Conjuring is here. Well, now, you might, in some regards, be able to argue that it's a modern classic in that it has spawned a whole film franchise. Like, I certainly would agree that Iron Man is a, a modern classic film, but while Iron Man was made with the original intent of making The Avengers, each of those movies still kind of had their own individual vibe, individual aesthetic, and it was clear that they were making them because they wanted to have these characters make their movies. The Conjuring feels like they went in going, we want what Marvel's got. There is a scene very early on where they're in the house of the, the main characters, Ed and Lorraine Warren, and the, there's a room where it's like all of the artifacts, all of the haunted and cursed objects that they have collected from different haunted houses and different like demon possessions and stuff like that. And they're all keeping them in one room. And I'm just like, okay, so this is the room where they're like, here's all of the movies that we're going to be making. And it's very clear with Annabelle. Uh, obviously, Annabelle was the first spinoff of the Conjuring verse. And it was kind of silly because she's like the first thing that they deal with in the movie. And they kind of yada yada how they deal with it. They're just like, oh, yeah, we recognize that you've got a, a, a doll that's got a demon attached to it. And then they just like cut away to a thing They're like, yeah, we just got a priest and he exercised it or, or whatnot. Or, uh, and now we just keep it locked in a, in a glass cage in, in our in our house. <laughs> Which, like, I'm looking at that, I'm just like, that kind of undermines, like, there are three Annabelle movies, and for her first introduction to be like, oh yeah, no, we were just able to, you know, we just dealt with it. <laughs> and, like, Annabelle actually comes back up later in the movie, completely unconnected to anything else, because the main plot of the movie is there is a haunted house that's, uh, um, like, a, a, a demonic spirit is the tries to get like mothers to kill their children or stuff like that but that's completely like that that is the main plot but then like we have an aside where like ed and lorraine's daughter uh has been playing with annabelle or something like that but it only happens like like it's a reference like a for like one or two scenes and it's just to try and amp up the tension of like uh, Ed not wanting Lorraine to be there because Lorraine had a bad experience when they did an exorcism before. And that whole thing is just like, okay, you're you're just setting up Annabelle because you want to make you, you want to have a, an Annabelle movie come out next year. It's things like that. It's the it's Scarlet Witch in Iron Man 2 where or sorry, not Scarlet Witch. It's um, uh, Black Widow in Iron Man 2 where she didn't really fit into the plot of the movie. She was just here to be like, yeah, I'm I'm a superhero too. I'm going to be in the Avengers. It's that kind of a thing. And this movie is... I'm torn. I want to say it's the pumpkin spice latte of basic bitch horror movies, but pumpkin spice lattes are actually tasty. This was very... This played it very safe. I think it played it very inoffensive. There's no, like, over-the-top gore. The, the ghosts just kind of have like some, you, you don't see the ghosts up close very often, but when you do, they just kind of have like that twisted face of makeup effect to them. But it feels very safe. And also, I, I guess I, I this is now that I have seen two movies in the Conjuring verse, I've seen The Nun 2 and I've seen The Conjuring. Um, I kind of have a bone to pick with the way that the film franchise just takes the Catholic doctrine as like a given, as like we're just we all assume that, yes, it is true. Catholicism is 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 the one true faith. Uh, they are the uh, sole experts on the, the occult and, and the supernatural realm, which is um, something that uh, I did admire the exorcist believer for fighting against that idea that all ghost fiction and exorcism fiction has to be in the realm of the Catholic Church. Trans Girl Jade says, I like it as a suspense story more than a horror story. It is probably more of a suspense story than a horror story. There's actually quite a bit less jump scares than I was expecting for this movie. One thing that I actually did genuinely like in this movie is the hide and clap game, both in the way that it was implemented for adding in the, uh, the spookiness of the ghost but also, like, that sounds like a fun game to play. And uh, I, I, I did, I think probably my favorite scene with the ghosts is when the ghost 
opens up the wardrobe while the mom is playing hide and clap with her daughter and she calls for the clap and the ghost hands come out of the wardrobe and clap twice. I, I did that kind of a thing. I thought that was that was uh, clever. I thought that was well executed. But this movie just felt very playing it safe, very inoffensive, very... Was this movie even rated R? I feel like you could have gotten away with the PG-13 Conjuring. Which, if that's the case, if it was rated PG-13, then that maybe that explains why it uh, was more financially successful. You know, PG-13 tends to make a lot more money than R does. Actually, I'm going to look that up right now. No, oh, it was rated R. Okay. But I think... If anything, there is to be said for the value to be found in this movie, it is in the performances of Ed and Lorraine, and particularly Lorraine. Vera Farmiga is probably one of my favorite actresses. She is the caliber of actress that you really only see a couple times in a generation, and she has not been given the work that would get her the accolades that she honestly deserves for the work that she puts in. She should have had an Oscar by now, but she hasn't been given the right roles to be get it, to get an Oscar. A lot of times she is given stuff that is like really far beyond far below her her level of talent. Like she played the mom in Hawkeye and really wasn't given much to do there. But if you've never seen Bates Motel, I highly recommend watching Bates Motel. It is a uh, it's a movie that's based ostensibly a prequel to Psycho. Uh, but it, it kind of goes into it, it, it like the last season basically tries to retell the events of Psycho, but it elements are changed and whatnot. Anyway, she plays the mom of Norman Bates in that. And it she plays such a complicated, multifaceted and broken character in that show that like you fully understand how Norman Bates became Norman Bates. And I'm pretty sure she's gotten awards for that show. Uh, fully deserved she is so good and if there is any desire for me to watch more of these conjuring movies it would probably just mostly be for vera formiga i want her to get a role that the industry will respect i want her to get an oscar at some point but it just feels like she is kind of stuck in like b-list or c-list territory i mean obviously the Academy has no respect for horror or for sci-fi, right? Like, you, you can get world-class performances in those genres, but the Academy will not will not give awards to them beyond, like, the technical categories. Unless you're Jordan Peele. They'll, they'll give Jordan Peele uh, accolades, but for the most part, there is a big stigma in a lot of the awards categories against speculative fiction against horror against sci-fi and against fantasy you know and, and i think probably the perception is that a lot of that is is slop and yeah a lot of it is slop like i think like what 90 percent of everything is crap but there is good stuff in there that i feel like vera formiga has done and she she should get a role that utilizes her talents in a way that people will recognize uh, Quinn says, I thought there was a controversy about the Academy and Jordan Peele. Well, there have been controversies with the Academy and uh, recognizing uh, uh, black performers and black filmmakers in general quite a bit. I don't know if Jordan Peele specifically had something there. I'm pretty sure he won an Oscar for Get Out, right? Like, I, 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 I could be wrong. Let me check. Okay. Academy Awards uh, nominee... Okay, so he was nominated for... Oh, I guess he produced Black Klansman and he was nominated for that, but he won Best Original Screenplay for Get Out. Yeah, okay, so Jordan Peele, he, he's been he's been rec recognized by the Academy. But anyway, Quinn says, I think a lot of it comes down to Blumhouse's model. They'll spend a little money on a whole bunch of movies and they only need a few major successes to make a profit. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen that. Um... Uh, I think Jason Blum said that if you spend $5 million on a movie, you are guaranteed to make a profit on it at some point along the way. You know, if not in the box office, then just through selling it to a streaming service. And yeah, there's a that's why there's a lot of crap that has the Blumhouse label. But then you have you have gems that come out of there, too, like um, uh, Happy Death Day. That was that, that was a Blumhouse film. Right. And uh, I really liked Happy Death Day to you as well. Happy Death Day to you 
I should talk about that movie at some point more, but like, I really liked that movie in, in that it was like not just a direct sequel to the other one in terms of like thematically like, whoa, we're just trying to do the same thing again where they were like, no, let's like examine why she was actually looping that day and like go into a weird uh, like a whole different sci fi element with it. And I think the movie, w I, I think probably the studio was a little scared to go whole hog in there because they forced in a slasher plot to that one, too, because it's the sequel to a slasher movie. Right. But I feel like that harmed that movie. Anyway, <laughs> this has been. <laughs> This has been all over the place. Uh, just this has kind of become less a, a review of The Conjuring and more just to talk about the state of uh, the horror film industry in general, and you know um, how the Academy kind of ignores it, um, and also how there are actors who could use better material than, say, The Conjuring. I, I give Vera Farmiga a, a new film franchise where she gets to do better things. <laughs> Basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, but I will probably be watching more of these Conjuring movies because if you are feeling incredibly generous, I have a Patreon. And uh, the top tier on my Patreon means that once a quarter, you can force me to watch anything. So long as it's like one movie or like one season of a TV show. And by one season, I mean like if, if it's like a 24 episode season, no. But like 12 or less, then sure. Um, and this review was a uh, patron request. So... If you want me to review something very specific and you have deep pockets, the $50 tier could get your movie that you want reviewed right up here. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm trying to get my channel monetized, so your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below, and thank you to all my patrons with a very special shout out to my Whale Shark tier patron Ryan D and my Anemone friend tier patron Piftle Cakes. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.